it's all about humanity. Don't sell all of your Bitcoin, Rocky Palumbo. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are tuning in from. Happy Easter to all who celebrate it. Um, happy Easter Monday, everyone. And thank you for many of you joining us on that Easter uh, break. Appreciate it. Uh, today, obviously, is Monday, the 1st of April, 2024. And as always, the ethos of this show is build a diamond hand. That is the name of the game. Welcome in, everyone. Very important if you are new to the channel that you do your own research. Don't take anything I say as financial advice. So important uh, you do your own research. Also, excuse me, I just had a drink. Uh, don't forget to pound the like button. Don't forget to retweet this. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell button and click all, and you'll be notified when I go live, which is every Monday and every Thursday at 6 p.m. London. Um, we are now back to five hours behind on the east coast of the U.S., which is 1 p.m., and obviously uh, 10 a.m. Um, on the west coast. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Oh, I've got a bit of an error message come up. Well, we don't want any of that, do we? Um, so as always, let's get into the preliminaries that I need to do before we get into the show in earnest. I would encourage you all to go into the show notes and check out my social media links. There's a link there where you can follow me on all sorts of different platforms. I would encourage you all to get on the Orange Pill app. Uh, and there's a link in the show notes too. If you want to get 10,000 free sats, you can get them by signing up using my link. But again, you don't have to, but uh, I would encourage you to get on it. Um, and my show sponsors, who I'm very proud and privileged to support because you'll see top left-hand corner of that slide there, they accept Bitcoin. Um, the Best of Exmoor is a holiday platform on the internet of only over 200 uh, beautiful properties um, in the southwest corner of the UK. Whether you're looking for sea view cottages, whether you're looking for inland, whether you want to sleep one to 21, one night to 50 nights, you just go and see what's available and you book it. For those outside the UK. If you want to know where it is, that is Exmoor National Park. I've put a red circle around it. So lastly, I would encourage you all to at least go in and check it out. You can scan the QR code there and see what it's all about, or you can go to bestofexmoor.co.uk. Uh, you can pay in currency, you can pay in Bitcoin, um, you can get a further discount by using my code there. So um, right, I want to get into, I want to go over here for a moment, don't I? Whoops, that's the wrong one. What am I doing? Hitting all the wrong buttons. Yes, we have. Crikey, can you believe this? 18 days to the halving. I can't believe how fast that's come round since the halving in 2024. Four years ago, people. Absolutely mind-blowing. And we'll blink... This will be done and it will be four years and we'll be at the 2028 halving. And just think what will be happening to the upside Bitcoin potential when all of that takes place. So pretty darn exciting there. Um, I want to just, if I may, switch back over here uh, to this one because I would encourage you all, as it says here from Bitcoin Ascent, for those that don't know, it is Rocky Palumbo in our chat. Um, uh, it says here the only Bitcoin in cold storage will not. Oh, sorry, only Bitcoin in cold storage will not be cut in half. Move your Bitcoin to cold storage immediately. Of course, that's an April Fool's joke because if you own the Bitcoin, you own the Bitcoin, no matter what happens uh, to uh, the uh, the halving event. So, thank you to Rocky for his tongue-in-cheek tweet that I added last minute.com. Okay, so that is that out of the way. Um, let's see who we've got in my chat, as I always do. I'm expecting numbers to be down, bearing in mind this Easter, but it is nice to see many of you here. Well, I keep clicking on that and something weird's happening. Hold on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Hang on. Let's try that. Yeah, that's better. Sorry about that. You can tell we're live, can't you? Uh, so Paul is in the house live. Good to see you. Uh, Bitcoin Meister, Adam, as always, thank you for your support. John G is with us. I see JB Bitcoiner, uh, Stuart Griffiths, Elaine, Mrs. UK. We've got Vinnie Rondo, Michael Weber on the South Coast bragging about the sunshine. Don't get much of that in the UK, do we? Um, Casso, 
Thank you for gracing the show. Really, really appreciate it when you take the time to join us. Uh, Rocky Palumbo, a.k.a. Bitcoin Ascent. If you're not following him on Twitter, you should be. Good to see you, Rocky, as always. Uh, what is that? Braindonian. Hey, good to see you. I don't know if it's your first time here or you've been before and changed your name, but welcome. IOM Driving. Let's go. Good to see you. Uncle Hodler is in the house. Glyn Payne, Mr. 60, Barefoot Barry coming in from New Zealand. Hey, listen, it is great to have you all in the house. Thank you for supporting me um, on Easter Monday. Um, I am simply, I was aware the show numbers might go down, but I just want it in there for the timestamp that there was a show. And I'm really glad I'm doing one. My back's greatly improved. I'm feeling on top form again, which is really good because of the last month's been a bit of a hell on earth for me. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, the crosses we have to bear, so to speak. Okay, so... Welcome in, everyone. Good to see you all here, as always. Let's get into the show notes. And if you remember the thumbnail, it talked about the upside potential of Bitcoin right now is massive. Now, I don't need to tell you lot this because, you know, I'm looking down the list of people in the chat and, it, you know, you're pretty well hard-nosed Bitcoiners. You've been around the block long enough, if you, if you are down the rabbit hole, to know why Bitcoin, you know, why Bitcoin, not crypto, why hold your, your Bitcoin in cold storage offline so it can't be hacked. You know, we, we know all of this stuff, okay? Um, but it is always good to know that, you know, when we see the price recover like it has done and obviously the ETFs playing their part, et cetera, and then the halving coming up and the money printer will have to go on again at some point, you know, we're going to be vindicated for all those people, those family members, those friends that ignored us. They laughed at us. They talked about us behind the back. They rolled their eyes and we will be vindicated for sure. But again, what I've done is found a handful of news articles that sort of really back that up. What is Vo uh, Casso saying? After all these years, it was nice to see an interview with Vortex. Yeah, I haven't watched that yet. I can't wait to. If you go back into my archives, people, um, ages ago, Vortex was one of the first people I think I got on the show and interviewed before he left the scene. Uh, for those of you that don't know who Vortex is, then you clearly aren't deep enough down the rabbit hole. He's a Bitcoin OG that was... Absolutely superb. He really was. He was around when I got into Bitcoin. I saw him on Adam Meister's show, Bitcoin Meister's show. So, um, yeah, Vortex is superb. So let's see what we've got going on. Okay, the first one here uh, from Crypto Globe. It says, why BlackRock CEO think is so bullish on the long-term viability of Bitcoin? Now, you've got to remember, this is only a couple of years ago where he was, he was, you know, was trouncing it, saying it was a money laundering index. Now, all of a sudden, he's thinking, whoa, there's some serious money we can make here on these fees, etc., and the price of Bitcoin going up. So, of course, now he's all over it like a rash, isn't he? I don't care for these institutions, but, hey, I front ran them, as of many of you, uh, so, which means that if they pump my bags, then bring them in, is what I say, because I was in before them. And in an interview with Fox Business on Wednesday, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink expressed his pleasant surprise at the outstanding performance of his firm's spot ETF, the iShares Bitcoin Trust, or iBit. Fink mentioned that iBit has become the, the fastest growing ETF in history, uh, with 13.5 billion in flows within its first 11 weeks of trading, which is actually quite staggering when you think about it. The ETF success has surpassed even Fink's own expectations. iBit has been attracting an average of over 260 million in inflows per trading day, with a daily high of 849 million recorded on March the 12th, as per data by Farside Investors. So, BlackRock are all over this. We know Fidelity, ARK are all over this. you got the, I think he's a CIO from um, Bitwise. Also, Matt Haugen, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I mean, he said, um, uh, the chief investment officer, CIO, yeah, of leading digital asset index fund manager Bitwise, Matthew Haugen, Hugen, I'm not sure how you say that, made a bold projection that institutional investors could funnel as much as $1 trillion into Bitcoin through ETFs. Amidst the fluctuating Bitcoin price trajectory, wavering between 60 and 70K, Haugen shares his insights with investment professionals, advising them to maintain composure 
and adopt a long-term perspective. And that's what we've always said. When I'm talking to somebody about investing in Bitcoin, I had a, a, a conversation only this afternoon, about two hours ago, with a close family member. And I said, if you're going to do this, hold it for the long term, at least 10 years. You're a lot younger than me, so really hold it for your retirement. Hold it to have a better latter half of your life because you're certainly going to get that if you dollar cost average in. That's what I told her. He emphasized the necessity of patience despite short term market volatility. I also covered that with her, that the price goes, I mean, she actually got it and she said, yeah, it's like stairs. You go up four stairs, you come back two. you go up six, you come back two. And that's pretty well from the regular person how I see it. It's just like climbing stairs and you get up several and then you drop back a couple. And, you know, looking at the price now, 68.7, we took a dip down to the very low 68s is the last one I saw. I don't know if we dipped into the 67s at all. Maybe somebody can put that in the chat. But right now, you know, Bitcoin is on sale at 1,455 sats per, per dollar. So, you know, once this thing goes and it really goes, you're never going to see, you know, 14, 1,455 sats for a dollar. You know, we're going to get down to the thousand sats for a dollar and then 500, etc. And that is where your money doesn't go so far, your crappy fiat when you're turning it into Bitcoin. So, you know, great buying opportunity now while we're in a bit of a sideways movement, uh, a reconsolidation, as I like to call it. And I'm telling you, we will go off again. We most definitely, we will go off. I saw this one from the Daily Hoddle, something else. So bullish. Bitcoin tapping into 84 trillion market. BTC adoption now overwhelming, said billionaire Novogratz. Now, love him or hate him, he's a billionaire. He's made a success of Galaxy. You know, he messes around with crap coins, had a silly crap coin tattooed all up the side of his arm. So he's a bit of a numpty. But, you know, you've got to understand, you know, when they say digital holdings fund, they're going to they're going to diversify people's money. And I sort of get that. And if that's what they got to do. That said, he's coming out and saying we are going to tap into an 84 trillion market. Let's have a look. Galaxy Digital Chief Exec Mike Novogratz believes that Bitcoin now has access to an 84 trillion trillion market following the approval of the spot ETFs. Speaking at the Bitcoin Investor Day in New York, the billionaire says Bitcoin is witnessing a dramatic increase in adoption with the launch of these ETFs. It is coming, people. There was something else I think he said. He also says that ETF salesmen will have no problem selling Bitcoin to participants of the 84 trillion market due to the mountain of debt accumulated by the US government. Go back and look at the video that I did last Thursday where I showed that trillion, that, uh, th that video on the trillion. And then if, if you haven't seen it, that is. And then the, the other video on America's debt in 2017 being 20 trillion. And now it's 34 trillion. And I can't remember the figures they're adding every 90 days. Is about a trillion every 90 days of debt that they're adding. That is throwing money into the system and that is debasing the dollar and people's dollar is going less and less and less buying things. It's just getting poorer and poorer and people are getting poorer. So, um, you know, it is so bullish out there. I can't believe, well, I've been bullish for the seven years next month that I've been in Bitcoin. Yeah, sure. It's bearish when you're looking at the price, uh, you know, when you've got a massive correction. But I've been generally bullish on Bitcoin's history ever since I got into Bitcoin. I don't quite know what to make of this one from the block. Bitcoin wallet wakes up after 12 years of dormancy. Um, I don't know. I don't know why that is. Let's see what they've got to say. A Bitcoin wallet has been inactive for nearly 12 years, transferred its entire 500 Bitcoin worth just under 35 million at the current price to multiple new addresses. The wallet originally received 500 Bitcoins on July the 14th, 2012, worth less than 4,000 at the time. There's another message. 4,000 in 2024, in 2014, a decade on, it's gone from 4,000 to 35 million. So if you put your money into Bitcoin today and wait a decade, there is a high chance you're going to go and do those again. You see, we didn't have ETFs 
you know, global multi-trillion funds rabbiting on about Bitcoin on the on the media channels like we've got today. We've only got a few percent of the global population are really understanding it and holding it. And there is such a way to go. And in a decade, you could go and do the same by stacking hard right now, particularly while the price is down like it is. The identity of the individual or entity behind the transfer remains unknown, as is the reason for the transfer. So, you know, maybe four grand to 35 million is enough for that individual entity and they want to take something off the table. Maybe you would if you turn four grand into 35 million. So let's understand that as the price goes up, there are always going to be sellers. There are always people going to be exiting. They've got a healthy profit. They want to start enjoying their life, you know, buying the things that they've always dreamt of buying. That's what humans do. Uh, yeah, Adam Meister said, this will be my third halving. Flipping, Adam, I just missed the third halving. I came in in early 17. So I guess I missed it by a year, didn't I, really? Um, so you've seen three of them. Absolutely incredible. And uh, you get more than anyone, you know, this is cyclical and it comes back. We get the highs, we get the blow off tops, we get the correction, we get the bear market. And then we get the recovery and the thing goes off and retakes all time highs and some and some. So, people, you should check out the channel Bitcoin Meister. Thousands of videos over there. Funny enough, Adam, I was interacting with Craig, Craig Ship the other day and, you know, I found your channel. He was on there as well. And I was there when you interviewed his dad. I don't know if his dad's even still with us now. Probably not. He was quite old, wasn't he? And um, fascinating to have this, you know, back and forth with Craig Ship on you, Adam, and how instrumental you have been to, on my Bitcoin journey. So again, thank you. You will never know how you built my strong hands so quickly, kept me out of poop coins and kept me building that diamond handset that I've now got. But then you got stuff like this. I mean, this guy's a right plonker, is he not? UK judge imposes a £6 million asset freeze on fake Toshi dismisses uh, Bitcoin creator claims, i.e. we know this now, don't we? He is not Satoshi, according to judges, etc. A UK judge issued a worldwide freezing order on six million of Craig Reich's assets, amounting to seven point six million dollars to prevent potential offshore transfer. The decision comes after a court case where Wright failed to substantiate his claim of being Bitcoin inventor Satoshi Nakamoto. All he had to do was show that he had the keys and move a coin. Couldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Came out with stupid, feeble excuses, manipulated paperwork, did all sorts of crap like that. So what What an absolute muppet, in my personal opinion. He's just made a laughing stock of himself. Uh, from Crypto Briefing, whale wallet outflows suggest 56K is Bitcoin's bottom. OK, I don't think we're going down there, but of course... What do I know? Of course, we could hit that as a bottom. I don't know. All I know is I bought my Bitcoin, my, a, a large majority of my Bitcoins at 2,000 a coin. So I was well behind you, Adam, but 2,000 a coin compared to 68,000 today just for holding, for having that strong hand. Think of those returns. Will you ever see that in a bank savings account? Will you ever see that in any type of stocks, bonds? No. It ain't happening. Stacking Richie, good to see you in the house. So um, also this one. I just thought I'd show this. Don't fully understand what all this is about, really. But Call of Duty, I know that's some kind of computer game. Um, cheaters, so people that are going on there and cheating, allegedly lose their Bitcoin as hackers target gamers with malware. The reason I wanted to put it up there was if you think they can't hack you if you're not careful with what websites you click it, click on, how you end up putting crappy malware, spyware, and other stuff on your computers just by being reckless with sites that you're going to. If you don't think that could be you, you're gravely mistaken. Yet another reason, as per Rocky's tweet, the real key to that tongue-in-cheek tweet was 
Get your coins off exchanges. I put it in the show build-up intro video. Get them off exchanges. Not your keys, not your coins, people. So, video game cheaters may have finally met their match as a mysterious group of cyber criminals has reportedly released an information stealer malware targeting gamers who cheat in Call of Duty, stealing the Bitcoin holdings of some of the players. Um, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is, my point in this coming from where I come from and how I run my show is to highlight that if they are targeting things like, you know, um, whatever it is, what's it called again? Call of Duty, never never looked at it once in my life. Um, they will target your computer if you leave them open to it. Don't ever click on, click on links in emails. Don't ever give anyone control of your computer that says they've got some Bitcoin to give you. Don't ever do that. We've got somebody in the chat right now that I'm keeping anonymous. It's not fair. I don't want to embarrass them, but they did lose some Bitcoin recently, the last week or two, and they're a friend of mine. And um, I think they've learned a hard lesson. So the point is, it can happen to anyone. Nobody's going to give you free Bitcoin, people. It ain't happening. And they certainly ain't going to give you 1.7 Bitcoin when you look at that as 100,000. So just be careful is all I say. And then look at this tweet I found from Radar. Someone just sent $1.08 billion of Bitcoin for $17. Try doing that with gold. You try moving a billion of gold, that will cost you several million. All the logistics of trying to move that with armored vehicles and, oh, my flipping Lord. And yet somebody goes and moves it paying $17.17 or 24,500 sats. Absolutely mind-blowing. Now, I'm really impressed with Matt O'Dell. If you don't know who O'Dell is, well, you're not going to find out on Twitter now, but he's on Nostra. Uh, Bitcoin News tweeted, Matt O'Dell deactivates his X account with a 200,000 following after being granted a free, a free blue check after for having over two and a half thousand verified subscribers. Now, why am I putting this up? Because Matt O'Dell is a real OG Bitcoiner. He really fights the Bitcoin cause and he's always been fighting against this blue check mark. And why should people have to pay for that? And and, you know, what are you giving over to get that? And da 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 da. So when I saw this, I see him. He's always on Nostra. I was dead impressed by that, especially deactivate an account with, you know, over 200,000 followers. So uh, way to go, Matt O'Dell. Dead impressed, I must say. Um, look at this one from Fred Kruger. And I agree with him. You've got Ben Bernanke here and you've got the plonker who is Paul Krugman. They have both won, is it, um, Nobel Prizes as economists and they've both been dead wrong. And yet people just consistently listen to them. Look at this, what Paul, Krug, Paul um, Krug, Krugman, <laughs> Krugman said. By 2005 or so, it will become clear that the Internet's impact on the economy has been no greater than the fax machines. Oh, dear. You know, stuff like this does not wear very well, does it? Just fantastic. Uh, one from Dan Held here. Um, I find it insane, and I agree with him, to see Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, one of the largest asset managers, well, actually the largest asset manager on earth, I believe, hard shilling Bitcoin. I'm very bullish on the long-term viability of Bitcoin. <clears throat> what an absolute turnaround. Mike, good to see you. Um, MTG London, good to have you in the house, as always. If you haven't smashed the like button, people, please do, which leads me, <coughs> excuse me, to my video of the day. And um, I like to find videos of people that I'm quite happy to listen to their point of view. They don't blow hot air. They're not full of BS. It's pure Bitcoin signal. And one of those people, and I'm proud to say that I met him in person in Scotland, was Larry Lepard. And I watched him recently. Now, the, the interview was done with a young lady at Bitcoin Atlantis. So it's several weeks out of date now, but that's not the point. Just listen and pay attention to what Larry says. It's only a couple of minute clip. And he says, 
Firstly, we, and I said this earlier, we are so early to all of this. And people think, oh, 68370 for a Bitcoin. Oh, it's too expensive. Well, no, if it is expensive if you keep looking at it in crappy fiat terms. But if you look at it as Bitcoin is ultimately going past a million and five million and 10 million over time, get those Satoshis because there'll come a point where you'll be measuring what you buy and sell in sats and not in the dollars you paid for it. So the unit bias is gone now when you can go and buy a BlackRock Bitcoin share I don't know what it is, 30 or 40 dollars or whatever it is, I can't remember. Um, so start dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. I mean, the first thing I'm saying to everybody I'm talking to, and I said it to the family member I was talking to today, and that was, do you have a pension that you, you pay into? And she said, yeah. And I, and I explained to her about, you know, your pension's not going to be worth the paper it's written on by the time you come to retire. And then you've got something Bitcoin with a CAGA or a compound annual growth rate of an average of 50% at the moment. So is there any pension going to give you a 50% return on your money? Absolutely not. And I'm saying opt out, write them a letter to the HR department, opt out, and whatever they're taking from you, simply redirect that into a dollar cost averaging process and just buy Bitcoin for the next 20 odd years. And you'd be so glad you did. And so what Larry Lepard is saying is we are so early to this, but although we're early, he said, you need to understand that volatility is a Wall Street game and they know how to play that way smarter than you and I. And they'll do everything by using that to take your Bitcoin by tanking the markets down, crashing the price down. Look over the last few weeks, how it spiked up and spiked straight down so quickly. That's Wall Street trying to liquidate the longs and the shorts, certainly the shorts. So you've got to understand that game and don't be freaked out by it. He also states, and I've been banging on about this on my show, and that is you really do need to learn about what you are holding. Otherwise, you will be shaken out of it. Let's listen to what he's got to say. You know, we're still we're still in the very early days. So early. Yeah. You know, I come from a tech background, so startups you know, background. Right. You know, with a very mature ecosystem of, of tech companies. And I came to Amsterdam. That was my first Bitcoin conference. And I saw some startups and I heard, I, I had a sense of the level of the maturity of yeah. the ecosystem. And I was amazed. I said, what? This is it? There is so much to do. Yeah, right. You guys, if you're entrepreneurs, if you're like Keys, this is the space for you to be in. Absolutely. There is so much to develop. Yeah. Oh, Marketeers, yeah. we need you. Salespeople, yeah. we need you. Like yeah. there is oh, so yeah. much to do. And that's what Adam Meister's always said. Be in motion. You can get a job within Bitcoin if you've learned enough to where you're at today. You know more than most people in the world, people. So if you want to get yourself a job in Bitcoin, they are out there. I think there's a website, bitcoinjobs.org or something like that. Google Bitcoin jobs and you'll probably find it. That was the first clip. Look, volatility is a Wall Street game. Mm -hmm. And these guys know how to play it really, really, really well. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to try and use it to take away your Bitcoin. And if you understand the meta game that's being played, you won't fall for it. And if you go yes. to my Twitter feed and you see the chart of the price of gold in Weimar, Germany. I saw Germany, it. I right? saw it the yeah, other day. That's, that's yeah, that's yeah, Dan yeah. Oliver. He's a good friend. A volatile as hell. Absolutely. Before the Weimar. Absolutely. And so, you know, buckle in, mm. right, and get prepared for that because it's entirely possible that we're going to see some of that. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's entirely yeah. possible. You know, and I mean, I know people, there are people here at this conference who, you know, they got into it late and they bought it, you know, 50 or 60K and they watched it go to 15. And I'm sure that was no fun for them, mm -hmm. you know, but they kept dollar cost averaging and now they're way ahead. And, um, you know, and that's just that's the way of it. You have to understand what it is. You have to understand why you own it and you have to believe in how inevitable it is that it is ultimately going to be, you know, as, as Sailor says, going up forever, Laura. You know, it'll be a couple hundred thousand a coin, you know, probably in the next few years, you know, maybe sooner. Um, it'll be a million a coin with probably within five years. And then it'll be two, three, four, five. I mean, it's just going to keep going. Wow. And so, yeah, it's wild, right? And, you know, 56 million millionaires, 21 million coins. Not even every millionaire can have one coin. I mean, there will come a time when people will be watching this 30 or 40 years from now. It'll be like being a whole coiner will be just like an amazing thing, right? 
you know, and, and yet today you can own a whole coin for the nice of a very the price of a very expensive automobile. Mm -hmm. Used to be a cheap automobile mm -hmm. <laughs> at no, twenty. Now yeah. sixty four. Yeah, that's a pretty nice car. But yes. but the point is that um, you know one coin is not out of the reach. Not yet. Um, not yet. But but it, but it, pretty soon it probably will be. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's certainly a coin at a million. That's not going to be. That's not going to be easy for somebody. And and the the ironic thing is, I think a lot of the wealthy in the world are going to. Because they don't understand it and understand the nature, they're always going to feel like it's too expensive. Yep. Yeah. It's gone up too much. No. They want to pay that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not the right lens to look at it through. You've got to look at it through what it, what it is and where it could go. You see what I mean? It is people like Larry, Bitcoin Meister, and you know all the guys that are out there educating today that helped me, a regular guy that for you know a quarter of his life drove – Big trucks for a living, not educated, you know, hated school. You know, you got to learn about the asset that you own, because if you don't, you will most definitely be shaken out of it. And I don't want anybody to be shaken out of their Bitcoin, particularly those that listen to and follow my show and channel. Fair alert. Welcome. Good to see you. Yeah. And you're dead right. The last thing the big boys want is to let our shrimps get rich off them. Well, if we front run them, we're going to get rich off them. So, you know. We were open-minded to learn about it. They weren't, and that's just the way it is. Love it. APZ, or APZ, uh, coming in from Saudi Arabia. Welcome, Saudi Arabia. Good to have you in the house, as always. Okay, you know that I always wrap the show with a quote. I found this one, and this is the ethos, by the way, of my show. You will only get honesty. You'll only get pure Bitcoin signal from me. They'll never, I'll never shill anything that wraps around crap coins, poop coins. It is Bitcoin-only content here and i just love this quote if you want to be trusted be honest honesty integrity politeness decent values care for your your fellow man you ain't going to go far in wrong uh, in life in my you ain't going to go you're going to go far in life if <laughs> with those values you know help someone if you can Understand when you're talking to somebody about Bitcoin, where they're coming from. So try and meet them where they're at and their understanding. Otherwise, you're just going to blow their heads to smithereens. You really are. Um, if you want to support me and you don't have to, abundantly clear, you do not have to. There's some SATS addresses. <clears throat> There's a buy me a cup of coffee address with crappy fiat if you want to. But like I said, I have not monetized the show. I do not need the money from this show uh, I only want to get more subscribers to prove that I could do it to myself because I'm just a regular guy, a regular pleb. Um, so, you know, yes, I want the numbers to grow just so I can say, I told you so. Look at this. That's the only reason. So that's it, peeps. Thank you for joining me on a an Easter Monday. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget, go back into the comments afterwards and leave me a comment. Um, many of you don't. And come on, guys. I try to, in, uh, try to bring you into the show in my chat. So the very least you can all do is go in and just say, great show, crap show, thanks, anything, because that spanks the YouTube algorithm. It keeps this more current for longer. So more of those people Googling it can find my channel instead of all the crap coin channels. So please do go in and leave a comment. Um, you'll have the social media links about to come up right now. But that's me done. Uh, all being well, I'll be back on Thursday. Rocky Palumbo, you did ask a question. I haven't sent the email out yet, but the next 21 million club is going to be, I believe, something like the 13th or the 16th of this month. I can't quite remember. Um, it's a Saturday around that weekend anyway. The email will be coming out probably tomorrow. Uh, but that's it. I'll catch you all on Thursday, everyone. Again, thanks for your support. I'm Brian, the UK Bitcoin Master, and this is, or it was, your bullish Bitcoin channel show. Catch you all on Thursday.